All right, thank you for joining us today on such short notice, and I will get directly to today's announcement. The tiebreaker in the women's 100 meters will be broken via runoff tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time here at Hayward Field. That decision was reached just moments ago in a meeting between the athletes, USA track and field officials, the athletes coach, and their representatives. I will take any questions. Yes. Will it be televised? Yes. Live? Yes, NBC has a live, they, they have a live window with USA Swimming, the swimming trials at that time, so that will be part of that live broadcast. I believe, I believe is free, but I will check that. Why was it that NBC uh, was tweeting about it before the press conference? I don't know. Okay. I think, you know, the, uh, the meeting was happening at the Hilton, and I was told that several news people were there, not just NBC. Okay. So as you see, it, it took a few minutes to, to organize everything, so it was pretty much simultaneous, I think. Uh, do you know what the lane assignments will be back here? Sorry. No, I don't. The decision was just reached. As soon as we could get that last song done, we came to announce it. What happened to this window? The first person across the line makes the team. And if it's a dead heat, as I stated before, then it is a coin toss at that point. Ambi? I, I was not in the meeting. I was actually here to ensure that in case there were media at the hotel that we were, were notifying everyone simultaneously. The meeting, what time is it now? Two? The meeting took approx lasted approximately two hours. Um, we did speak with the athletes and their coach and their representatives last night and then resumed um, the discussions this morning to finalize everything or this afternoon. Yeah, Ken? Um, the athletes' representatives um, are Kimberly Holland, Wes Felix, um, from USATF were Stephanie Hightower, Max Siegel, Jackie joyner Kersey was also in the room, and then Bobby as well. Was the uh, coin flip ever even uh, decided as a possibility, or was it always possible it was going to be a runoff? Well, it, it was always... You know, it was always presented as a possibility, and really the coin toss was in there more just in case as I said when we first announced it, just in case neither athlete really wanted to make a decision. Um, we fully expected that the tie would be broken either via a runoff or if one of the two athletes decided that they weren't going to pursue the 100. But I don't think anyone legitimately thought that it would end in a coin toss. And by the way, let me add, because there's been some discussion about alternate ways of breaking the tie, and people have offered things like going to the fastest time in the semifinal or being the higher ranked athlete coming in, all of which are very legitimate means of breaking a tie, but we cannot retroactively do that because the athletes wouldn't have known coming into the meet that they might have to run their rounds differently. And also, we knew who had the fastest time in the semis. We knew who was the higher ranked athlete in the world. So if we said, after they came across the finish line, here's how we're gonna break the tie, that would open us to criticisms of basically baking who we wanted to be on the team as well. So that's why the coin toss is there. If we have a dead heat in the future, I wouldn't anticipate the coin toss necessarily being there as an option. But in the situation that we were in where we had no procedures coming in, that was the, the next best way in case the runoff wasn't going to work. So, <coughs> pardon me. So it was a two hour meeting, um, but it seems like a very simple decision. What was it that you know, everyone should have known what they wanted when they came in? Can you, uh, why, why two hours in the meeting? Again, I wasn't in the room. Some of the topics that were discussed would have been when exactly the runoff would be. You know, obviously, the only thing worse than waiting too long to have a runoff is having it too soon and having one of your star athletes get injured. Um, that would have been a worst case scenario. So we had to consult with the athletes, their coaches, their representatives to make sure that we weren't putting anyone at risk, but that we were also getting a resolution to it. So we had to come up with a time and place that worked well, and also discussing all possible options still. Uh, last week when this all went down, you said Sunday night. It'll all be done Sunday night. Mm -hmm. A lot of different ways of saying it, but Sunday night right, the right, team right. will be decided. W when did that change, and, and why, why did... Uh, you compromise. Well, Sunday night was always our intention, but again, we had you know two athletes running their six rounds, 
And let's also be honest, and Allison ran a 2169 yesterday. That takes a little bit of a toll on your body. So you have to be practical. I mean, ideally, it would have been today. We are submitting our roster to the USOC tomorrow, as has always been planned, and the runoff will happen tomorrow. So the net result of turning in our roster on the USOC's timeline is still fulfilled here, and also reducing the risk of injury as well. Jill, uh, is there a discussion, or will it be possible that in the future, if now that you have some criteria, that the runoff would be held much earlier than this, let's say? Yeah, I think all those sorts of things will be under discussion as we put in new procedures. I don't think we're going to see new procedures prior to our annual meeting. This is our last national track championship. So certainly by our annual meeting, which is when we go over rules changes, and this is a rules year also, so the competition rules will be looked at. And as specific as we can possibly get, obviously this has been a learning process that uh, you, can't be, you can't possibly be too specific and consider too many scenarios because there are a lot of scenarios that would come in. And someone else also offered up, we also have to look at what if you have a three-way tie? And because there is no three-sided coin. So that's where the, the faster times you know, come into play. Ambie. Jill, I did not actually hear this myself yesterday, but I believe Bobby Kersey was widely quoted as saying no time before Tuesday would work. I'm wondering if you know that came up at all and do the NBC swim trials extend to Tuesday? I don't know how long the swim trials last. And let me state, you know, NBC considerations were not part of the consideration set. You know, the consideration set was the health of the athletes, getting our team named on an appropriate timeline and fielding the, the strongest possible team. Um, You'd have to ask Bobby about his timeline. It's my understanding, based on the people who have spoken to Bobby, including those at USA Track and Field, was that his strong preference was Tuesday, but Monday still provided a 48-hour rest window for the athletes. And to have it Monday night specifically, again, to allow the maximum amount of time to rest and recover. Oh, we've had some media come in late. Could you repeat the decision? That the runoff will happen on Monday at 5 p.m. Pacific time here at Hayward Field. Jill? Yes, Tom, in, in the, the voice of yeah. Tom. Okay. Hi. Um, you said it was two hours today. Yes. What, how about last night? How long did they meet last night? Last night was more of a series of conversations that started after, after the race had finished here at the track and continued back at the hotel. And do you, can you characterize what happened in those discussions? What, what, it it was mostly setting up the time to meet for today, realizing that for logistical reasons and other reasons last night, you know, the athletes needed to figure out how they felt physically. You know, you need a night to sleep, sleep on it, see how your body feels the next day, and even emotionally, too. I think for both women, you know, it was an emotional race for both of them. So rather than force someone to rush into a decision, again, be practical and reasonable and realize that making a decision today is just as effective. Because I think once last night, once the race had happened and once we had those late night discussions, it was clear that a runoff would probably not happen today, again, just to be safe for the athletes, so that's when we decided just to sit down in a room all together today and, and hash it out. Jill, over here. Yes. Um, now that you've sort of gone past this a lot of trials time on, into Monday, mm -hmm. is there concern that athletes who, who didn't have the A standard, whether it's a high jumper or the, or the, the javelin guys, uh, will file, file a grievance with the USOC or CAS saying that, that they should be allowed extra time uh, to chase an A standard now that you've sort of extended uh, your selection process past Sunday. But this is to select the team. This is not to chase a standard. So I understand your question, but it, that's to determine two different things. Jill, I guess clearly neither woman surrendered her spot. Correct. But what, what was, do you know what, how much that was discussed? Whether one, I don't. I, I don't. I, I would, well, I don't. I would suspect that if one of the women was going to forfeit their spot, it probably would have been a much shorter meeting. So, uh, Do you expect either or both to make a visit out here for a press conference? And if not, would there be any sort of teleconference or as soon as the, as the soon phone? as this press conference is done, I'm going to get in touch with their representatives because literally I, I got the, the notice as they were getting ready to come out of the room because I wanted it to be immediate so you guys could get the news. So we will definitely make the inquiries to see if we can get them out here. Max and Stephanie will be speaking after the conclusion of competition. Um, I think first up we'll have Amy Deem and Andrew Valman just to talk about 
you know, the meet and the team, and then we're going to have Stephanie and Max again to wrap up the trials, and I'm sure they can directly answer some questions as well, although that's a little past deadline. But. What did this tie teach the USATF? To have all of your procedures in place. Um, and, I'll, you know, obviously, I, it's difficult to explain why something wasn't in place other than it had never occurred before. But to have thought of every scenario and have those rules and those procedures be clear to everyone involved is the most important thing, for sure. And that there's very little room for error in 100 meters. All right. Thank you, guys.